Champions Cup shirt of... Uh, Here we go in the game. Um, can you put me up to speed again, please, Lorena? Um, I'm a guy in uh, white from Denmark and Black Mermaid from Sweden in blue. Oh, black. <clears throat> Amager again uh, playing here, I think, with the nine player, ten players, or was it eight? I think it's only eight. Let me mm. check. Amaga was with eight, and Black Mermaid with nine, so that's not much a uh, yeah. difference. So an uh, equal uh, team numbers, uh, player level. Amaga goes into the defense, stopped uh, with a tackle. Like memories break free. Yeah, Wolf, can I help you? <laughs> so, we have the Swedish team attacking over the corner, staying at the distance. The um, Danish uh, girls are waiting pretty much for the Swedish to get closer. It's quite passive, quite quiet right now. There's no much happening more than Sweden just keeping the ball, moving over the corner, but not really deciding to attack. Now there's four players, three players coming towards the goalie of the white team. They're coming over the close corner. The one position of the ball was just trying to push the defender aside, but it was intercepted. Now they're back on the surface and they're trying to come over the other side but um, this, uh, there was not player to get the ball right now, but we still have the Swedish girls being at a still safe distance from the goal of um, Denmark. It looks like Amager um, let's, let's uh, lay the Black mermaids around their basket, and uh, the mermaids are testing and probing into the defense, but not yet going for a. Uh, for uh, here we have a, a chance. That's that's the scene we want to see going into the basket in a team effort, but this is easily stopped, and was not very forceful, not very fast, uh, to threaten the defense of Amager. And there, from time to time there is a mermaid player um, positioning herself uh, in the open side of the basket but until now none of them um, passed the ball to this waiting player <clears throat> and they always tried only to attack on the close side and are tackled away to the surface but still in ball possession after uh, four and a half minutes in the first half of this game. Yeah, this, I mean, the speed is quite, uh, quite, I mean, they're not creating a lot of wave of attack until now. I mean, Sweden is in ball position, has been mm. for most of the time. They're coming now with three players, but Amaga recovered the ball pretty well. Now they're trying to swim away and, and go to the other uh, side. That was the goalie that recovered the ball and I was in the surface trying to find someone to pass. Uh, let's see if you know they can pace up a little bit more uh, the game. Now we have uh, the Danish uh, player with the ball at the goalie, being tackled a bit, but being supported by other white players. Nevertheless, now it's three blue players against the one in position of the ball, and the captain Mariana recover it and pass it farther to the next Amaga player that is now in the corner waiting for the players to recover and maybe start diving for the next attack. That was a bit of a more dangerous attack than what Sweden has achieved yep. on the Danish side. Yep. I mean, they really decide, okay, now we go in and we see. Sweden did not have that uh, in all the minutes they had the ball. I mean, they had ball for half of the match uh, before. So, um, the Danish team is creating far more chaos and disruption in the goalie area of Sweden and then the next player of uh, Amaga is coming and still even if she's against two or three she goes in tries few seconds and goes out and this is really uh, 
well done. I mean, she's not losing the ball. They're not losing the ball in the process now. Uh, but they are just... They put, uh, And uh, Akaren is the ruling champion of uh, the last year. And the world champion. And I mean, not, not, not Akaren, but uh, the Norwegian yeah. team. I mean, A lot of the players are yes. in the national team. Call from the referee. We have a live feed again from a uh, video feed. Um, less uh, than 15 seconds left in the first half here of the Black Mermaids in blue against Amager in white. And Amager is in ball possession, but uh, end of the first half we are in the break, and the teams change the side. So it was uh, not unexpected to see Amager in a safe uh, defense position. Mermaids playing around them, and when Amager got into offense and put pressure on the Mermaid basket, they scored. Um, it will be really difficult now for the Mermaids to equalize and to get back in the game and get a chance to win it, because the Amager defense, we saw that in the first minutes of the game, is quite solid and not easy to penetrate by the players of the Mermaids. So we have now uh, half time of the time between the, 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 the two times. <laughs> so one zero for Amalgar. Uh, Sweden had had most of the possession of the ball for the first five or six minutes and Amaga had recovered the ball, had swum towards uh, the Swedish side and within two, three minutes they had scored one goal uh, and later on they were more in possession of the ball. So now I think everything's still possible. Everything uh, always is still possible, Lorena. Yes. That's a very positive and optimistic way of seeing life. You know I do. Yeah. So 10 minutes uh, are still uh, to be played. And uh, they, I mean, both teams are with small number of players. I mean, we know that the Danish team has eight players. Last year, with seven players, they won the third place uh, in the tournament. And uh, the uh, Swedish team is with nine players. So this has to be, you know, a tire. I mean, they, 
they should be probably tired already after all the other games of the last couple of days and they need to see how they can play the most effective way now Sweden needs to maybe be more on the offensive and try to go and score if they want to have at least a, a tie so let's see if they can now achieve that um, let's see if the pep talk of the halftime uh, helps them to have more position of the ball and maybe it's a pity that they had the position of the ball and they did not really attack I mean they were like all the time in front of the goal of, of the Danish team but they did not really create dangerous situations Boss, you want to say something? Um, back in the game here second half nice opening by the Mermaids but uh, fastly intercepted by our Marga player Ball out of playing uh, field. And it's a free throw against uh, Amager, I think. Yep. So, Swedish team in blue, Danish team in white, and uh, Sweden needs to score, otherwise... Um, they are out. No, they are the triangular, no, out, they, but yeah. No, but out, uh, in, in the, in, out of the chance of winning this <laughs> <Yeah>. game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a, the ball dropped, but uh, Sweden recovered it. And this is how we had the first uh, half of the, the first half time. I mean, but now... But more pressure now, uh, uh, yeah. as we've seen in the first... First half, uh, but you need more waves coming. Yeah, this is uh, take it too long, and it's no always one with play. A better plan. And look, exactly, they're not doing as much pressure as the Danish team did. Like going in, you know, disrupting the defender and the goalie, and then going out within two or three seconds in very effective way because they did not uh, lose the ball until they score. And it took them two minutes. It was really nice to see. So now let's see if Sweden can replicate that. I mean, we have experienced players uh, here. I mean, the Black Mermaids have been winning the Nationals in Sweden since at least 15 years. I, I don't know any other... I think Malmö came once for the girls, but most of the time, since 15 years, I can remember it's the Black Mermaids. So surely they have newer players, but also I can imagine that they have experience when they have participating already in the Champions Cup few times. So let's see. Um, now it's a free throw for the Danish team and Sweden, the Swedish player, the 83, was trying to intercept the ball, but now it's two white against two blue and um, cluster on the surface and a uh, great recovery f for the Amaga girls that are trying now to um, at create an attack Moving the ball around, coming over the close corner, going in. This is what I mean. They go in, just create a little bit of chaos and pass the ball. And they keep, they're very good and keep in possession of the ball. Um, and they keep up the pressure. They keep, uh, the, they really stay close to the defense, close to the basket. And continuously put pressure with a wave after one another on the basket. And uh, this creates the opportunities to score and they don't let uh, the mermaids break free. They stop them immediately if they lose the ball. It was uh, holding without ball. It's a free throw against Amaga. So let's see now if Sweden can now create some danger. And there you go. They are coming. Four of them. And... Over the close side, there's something going on there in the corner. And uh, now it's one player trying to attack the goalie and pass to the next one. Now it's two coming onto two of the defenders on, on the Danish side. But, but, but you can see the away. orientation of the mermaids. If they attack, it's already, if they go in, They're, they turn yeah. around. Yes. It's, it's you don't different. See the, and, yeah, the yeah, body the language danger, yeah. of Amager is totally different. Each of them wants to score when they go in. The mermaids hesitate a little bit, wait for each other, and then the, the moment is gone. They don't uh, raise this constant pressure on the defense. You need to force uh, the defending team to create a mistake, 
and uh, create enough chaos and pressure. Thank you, Emil. Yeah, she, Emil uh, Lindstrom was saying that the, the Black referee. Mermaids have been uh, winning for the last 10 years straight uh, of the national. So, yeah. Free throw against the mermaid, holding without ball. After this game is Orcas versus Akaren for the triangular of the, the first thir three positions of this cup. So. And Amager again in pole possession and uh, immediately they put pressure around the basket. But this pass was a long pass and uh, intercepted by a mermaid. And Lost the next again. It's two, three players coming. It's, it's great to see how the Danish team react a little bit more aggressive. When they see one of their players have the ball and is uh, swimming a counter-attack, more people are coming together than what normally I see f on the Swedish side. And uh, still four minutes Ooh, to go. That would have been a nice chance. There was a player, a market player, right under the ball carrier. No defense there, but you didn't see her from the open side. And here another one, another attack. Their waves come in quite fast, very elaborate, uh, playing to keep the defense busy and uh, to create the chance. Less than four minutes left here in the second half. But in the end, we have to admit, uh, uh, even though uh, the attacks of the Amager look more uh, uh, elaborate, it's only a 1 0 lead, so. Yes, no, no, I mean, it's Sweden. Defense of the Mermaids is, is up to it. They, uh, they are under more pressure, but uh, they don't make many mistakes. And uh, Amago really uh, has to work hard around the defense area. So we are back with the Mermaids around the Amago basket. And. Uh, Oh, another call from the referee. Apparently, Strangling. attack on the Isanga on the neck, and now it's a free, free throw, throw for Amaga. It's the last minute of this game. We already hear the other teams getting ready. Ah, no, sorry. As a uh, timeout. I, I thought so. So I just took a look. It was three minutes left, and then suddenly they're 45 seconds. I mean, time flies. <laughs> no, it's a timeout for Black Mermaids. Uh, they yeah because now it's a free throw for Amager so they need to and they have three minutes so they need to think what they will do to recover that ball and maybe score within the last three minutes they have of game so I think it's a good idea to have the time out also to gain some air to rest a little bit to breathe and and see if they can implement any tactic you know last minutes saving the moment. What what would you do in the uh, in case uh, you would uh, be the coach of the merits? What would you tell them uh, in these last uh, three Again, minutes? What? what would you tell the mermaids to do in the last three minutes to score and at least? Uh, they they have to take all the risk that yeah, losing two agreed. zero or um, one zero is the same. But if they don't risk now, then it's going to be a loss anyhow. So. We we used to have a lot of these situations where we used to play with with the Berlin and a few times and we had scored in, in the last six seconds against Denmark and against I think even Norway and normally we would go for the last minute or thirty seconds all of us six yeah. we did not have any any player at the back and would go just and and and, and, and two it, or three times we we actually score and 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 won because we are already on the yeah. tie and we did not want to go to penalty so but yeah. Because it doesn't matter if you lose 3 0 or 1 0. If you lose, you lose. But if you open up a chance to win, yeah. you and, and you need to start opening up the, in, in this time. This is the time which you need to start taking all the risks you did not take before, because otherwise. Yeah, okay, Memorates, listen uh, to it, to Lorena. Uh, Go no. forward. <laughs> this is just my opinion. I'm saying this is the right one. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really dangerous. Uh, really uh, uh, hard work against. Uh, to play against Amaga here for the Mermaid. And Amaga is in ball possession and uh, time is working on their favor and they are playing their game around the Amaga basket. Like even I would say now, don't do defending. Go all of you for checking. 
why do you want to have two players passive yeah. lying there? Yeah. You need to get that ball. So I know that it's scary to play with other defenders, but back in the day, there was the tactic of playing without defender, just with the goalie. The goalie was a little bit more forward. Sure, but you have to and, be used you, to it. And you had, you have, you outnumber, I mean, you need to try to outnumber. Of course, be ready to go back if you need to, but right now, this is a loss of resources. Having a yeah. defender lying there yeah. when they are Margar, and they are doing a great intelligent job. They're just passing the ball around. Exactly. Now there is, they're attacking. Oh, and, and another, another goal. goal. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, lying in a good defense is not enough here for the Mermaids. They have to break free and create the opportunity to equalize. And uh, with, uh, with a 2-0 lead now, marker is uh, quite safe. And it's uh, 1 minute 15 left. Uh, not impossible. We saw uh, no, games because, yeah. turning around. But with the... With the level of uh, play we saw here from both teams, I would say uh, Amagor can feel quite safe right now. And another attack from the Mermaids stopped uh, above the goal of Amagor, tackled the way up to the surface. It's 45 seconds and again, let's see. They are coming now towards the uh, Danish basket, and it's more. There's more now. There, there's more movement here. There's a little more of flow. Uh, the, this this last attack was nice. I mean, it would have been great to have that. You know, few often more often, and not just passing the ball three meters away. Uh, now the next two are coming, and uh, 30, 13 seconds. Uh, oh. That's a pity that the ball uh, got so far away from the basket because it was a good position right underneath the goalie. But look, now they're in position of that. Now this is what they should have been done yeah. this time. But well, it's easier said than that. We don't want to be mean. I mean, I know how hard it is playing when you're tired and then sometimes things don't work out. You try and you see that every... We saw it, I mean, the earlier uh, uh, games today. I mean, the male Orca teams also were not in the best shape. <laughs> Um, well, they also was struggling against Malsh. Yeah, so, and um, it's, it's the third day of a competition, and yeah. uh, they the teams don't Good have job, much time teams, yeah. to recover. So, uh, if you have already in the in the two days before tough games, um, they wear you out, and uh, the the half a day recovery time and the one night recovery time sometimes it's not enough to go back into shape. And it's also mentally exhausting to face these teams <coughs> sorry to face these uh, these teams these high level teams and to concentrate so it not only takes a toll physically but also mentally <coughs> Wait, one second i'm just checking here you got one second lorena uh -huh. so we have the um female orcas now against uh, Akaren, like Lorena already said, and this is going to be a tough, uh, tough game for the Orcas. They have many young players uh, in their ranks, and I think Akaren uh, is uh, the experienced team in numbers here in the water in the upcoming game. You're watching the Champions Cup. Uh, 2019 here in Berlin and it's the 31st Champions Cup. Um, we look back quite on a long tradition of playing on a underwater rugby community family, a rugby family uh, idea based cup and uh, we're quite proud of the, the atmosphere and the idea behind it uh, to have uh, high-level focused games with the top teams of the world and uh, on the other hand offering uh, the opportunity for a relaxed atmosphere around the pool and the party afterwards. Um, for every team visiting the Champions Cup, it's a special event every year and uh, owning the title of the Champions Cup winner is uh, 
comparable to the title you get at the World Championship. And uh, as we know, the male Orca team from Colombia owns both titles now. They are uh, World Champions and uh, Champions Cup Champions. And uh, we will see a final uh, between between the uh, Orcas from Colombia against uh, Malch from Germany. And this will be a first. Uh, they never faced each other in the Champions Cup uh, in the final and for the first time.